it. So my mother's first thought was a Karachi, this was one Karachi connection. Second is, Cincinnati is town in Karachi, a township created by a Salgaonkar, a Goan Salgaonkar. Cincinnati is a brew. That means that great people must be there in Saligam. That was her next uh, point of thinking. Third, she said, and I'll never ever forget this, Saligam is known for foxes. So I would like you to be a, a little bit of a foxy in your life. I was not exactly cunning and sly, but definitely I got the practic practicality from this place. So she, she was influenced by, the, and there was another thing, there was still another thing. My father, in his childhood, with his parents, lived in Arari for years together and my father studied in Mardardai, the one of the oldest schools of Goa. So this was still another. With that, all right, she was the boss and really she was the boss of the house, not my father. With that, I, we came to Saligam. Certain things of our, our para remain. The pig toilets, no electricity, firewood. But slowly and gradually, things, things changed personally for me. And what were they? Now, first and foremost, the locality I lived in. I, we lived in, in two different houses in this three-year-old period. And today, Dr. Frederick took me around to see the locality I lived in. One house bordering on Dikrul Walo and Salmona. And the other house purely in Dikrul Walo, I think. Am I right? But uh, let us say Arani, the whole thing, Arani. But just to tell you where I stayed, I stayed in a house, now it's uh, under repairs, it's, it's covered up and it's uh, undergoing repairs, tall pillars and all in front, just on the turn, leading to that small bridge, Sanko, and, be, uh, at, at, and behind that was one of my closest friends and classmate, Blandina M. R. de Souza. Another very dear classmate is here present, Idalin Fernandez. And if I am to look at this group and think about that particular period of time, how many people I met today who belong to that? There are only these two. One, my teacher, Shirley. I bow my head down to you, Miss Shirley. And the other is Idali. The locality I lived in was very lively. I was a serious person. I had not yet got out of my shell. But that first house in front of Blandina vibrated at the back, at the back of my house with a full of music. Blandina's mother playing the piano, Cedric playing the accordion. And slowly and steadily, I, I became not just, you were not just my classmate in 9th, 10th and 11th, close friends, I spent some days in that majestic house. 
really that family that family of blandina her mother cedric steven played such a tremendous role on my life i would not have got out of my culture shock if it were not to them i owe it so much to them it's another family that i owe much to not not uh, leading to arari just on the turn the other turn the other turn coming down uh this um, seminary road the former adolf saldana's house that old house also was they were related to me they were related i'm not going to get into the relation fourth cousin fifth cousin what but they were they were there like another anchor an anchor in my life they were also musical uh, uh, anita on the piano george on the guitar anna saldana on the on the mandolin and ida saldana on the bass between blandina's house and and this house most of my evenings i had spent in the first year out of the three years first year most of my evenings in these two houses actually i am a quiet person i don't go to people's homes even today i like to lead a very private life but these two families i'm talking only of locality please huh these two families drew me completely down slowly i got acquainted to other two other areas of saligaon whether the melo wado maybe padmada the shop padmada sundays saint cathedral chaplain mind the doors was too far for me majestic sparkling white a great church in goa but too far for me and maybe i was not too spiritual maybe till today i am not very spiritual half hearted look warm you could call it so this was one image one factor that played such an important role in the life of a girl who was 13 or 14 years old without any siblings returning back from uh, karachi which is then the capital of uh, of pakistan and we run down pakistan like anything but go the whole of goa when i came actually you looked to me like one village with kamiyas and everything so so but there was another and uh, another uh, thing another place and that is the reason why we have our three years and that is my school a teacher is here a classmate here classmate for three years here school <laughs> Ruth's convent at that time didn't have the second floor. Very, we are very proud that batch. Our batch is very proud to have arranged fairs and lots of activities for that second floor. Very proud of it. But all that happened after I left Zalikau. The school, while my Saint Joseph's convent in Karachi was a high, high-level school. We, where even Benazir Bhutto also studied for a year or so. Saint Patrick's on one side of Saint uh, Saint Patrick's Church Cathedral and Saint Joseph's was on the other. Both very elite schools. At that time, my father was getting just hundred rupees in 1962, hundred rupees salary, but fee structure. and i was in the c structure 25 rupees per month 
always school education in St. Joseph's and in Lutz Convent was full day school. Full day. So I really don't know as a former director what is the fuss of, of a full day system. When I have always been a product of full day school. The school, while St. Joseph's, St. Joseph's of Karachi gave me all the skills. Language skills, whether reading, writing, whatever I am today, those skills are from there. Skills of mathematics, science and all this, because for English, for instance, as a Cambridge student, I studied as you like it in the seventh standard. Can you believe having as you like it today in, in Goa, if you, to have the play, to study the play as you like it in seventh standard into, in Goa today? Impossible. So with those skills, I got a lot of skills over there, years and years over there. Skills. Very proud of that school. But it is the three years in Saligam which gave me confidence. It, 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 it's the confidence that I built was in Lutz Convent, Convent School, a village school. I'm very proud that whatever I am today is uh, uh, partially due to a village school, partially and largely due to a village school. What is it that built my confidence over there? My classmates, Sandina and Angela, Doyle and Bella D'Souza. If Idaline will remember, they were tomboys, is Anne Adrian, were tomboys. You, you, we, they, I, I'm 100% sure, Sister, uh, Miss Shirley will, I don't mean, disagree with me. We, uh, Sister Veronica said that ours was the naughtiest batch at that point of time. I think she used to say it for everyone because she was quite a, <laughs> she was quite a soft person herself. But I, I am sure we were the naughtiest. Why, I'll tell you. I became a teacher later on for 22 years. Very often I used to think, will I be play, play, play the same pranks that we played on our teachers? I'll give you my pers personal... Either will agree or disagree, I doesn't remember, I don't know. We had a maths teacher in the SSC. Even before that, there was Curia Course and George Kuti, who passed away very recently. We had Miss Blossom, Miss Pinto, and so many others. And Sister Veronica was the best of the lot. Taught us French and civics and administration. Best of the lot. Let me give you, can keep it. Don't worry. I, cold also, I can drink. The, the issue was that how naughty we were, I will give you the example when you tell me then. Because I, as a teacher for 22 years, I have never faced this, how naughty we were. We used, we, they used to link students with the teachers, you know this? <laughs> Did you have like that? Openly tease them. Teachers knew and the students also knew. It was so embarrassing. For instance, I was linked with Gajanan Pennekar, my maths teacher. And to my further embarrassment, long after I left, he became my director of education. <laughs> first, first, when I joined the director, he was two levels below me. Then with the help of the Supreme Court and me, he had some benefits. He, he rose, he got three promotions on the same day in two levels above me. So you just imagine, I doubt, uh, uh, if openly Angela Bella openly would link the stu certain students with the teachers, openly in front of them. With, uh, naughtiness was not with, uh, without malice. Mischievousness was without maliciousness. And that was one thing that played such an important role in my life. We had the mock parliament. 
I don't know if it still prevails. Mock Parliament. In the first year, I was a minister of uh, a discipline, uh, 10 paisa fine for those who didn't use their proper uh, uniform, if they are, uh, were late, if they were caught, 10 paisa fine, if they were caught uh, talking in uh, any other language other than English. There was what, uh, I don't know if this still prevails, first bell was freeze bell. Freeze. If you didn't freeze, you were, you were caught, you paid 10 paisa fine. It's a lot of money in those days. <laughs> <laughs> this second bell and freeze and a walk to form your lines in the rays of the sun in front of the school. That the, still they must be standing in that way. I can never, I have never seen it. So many schools I have visited at the time of assembly. So many schools, I, as an inspector I have gone from beginning to end, aided as well as, uh, unaided as well as government schools, but none of this. And then the second year I became education minister. Means my party won, and so I, uh, I became education minister. And in the third year, my party lost. I can't even remember also the name of my party, and I became speaker. I who was so quiet, like a rat, I became the speaker, and I, the prime minister used to prompt me. Bella D'Souza was the prime minister. She used to prompt me as to what I should do. And, I, and definitely the words, in the parliament were point of order for silence. I remember that the reports were given by Sister Maronica at the end of the term, right from the stage, upstage. The reports were given and especially the first, first, second and third had to go up. I remember the so many operas or operators that we performed on the same stage, on the same stage. I never participated in all these things in St. Joseph's, the very elite St. Joseph's, but yet I, it has given me the base it, that I can, cannot deny. What I'm trying to tell you is that how much the school formed the Selsa Pinto of today. What role it played in the formation of Selsa Pinto of today. There is one thing I forgot to, actually these are the two, my locality and my school. My mother never sent me to Kotla to the marketplace or to Padmanab sometimes to, for the shopping. My father was a daily mass goer at uh, St. Catherine's chaplain but not me. But first Fridays and, and uh, first, sa first Saturdays and certain saints, uh, feast days had to be observed. He, I'm sure he's, he's in heaven, I'm sure. Because he was a very faithful servant of the Lord. On the other hand, my mother was a little bit foxy. That was true, absolutely true. And I was somewhere in between. I was, so I am sure I was somewhere in between because my mother was talkative, my father was quiet, and, and I was somewhere in between. There is one more thing I have never ever forgotten, and I think there, uh, I remember uh, two more things. One is this institute. I was not uh, in, uh, I visited this institute, but was not a member. I don't think those who were people, uh, non salgaonkars could be members. Is that so? They could not be members. But I remember one corner for the library. I remember certain arrangements for sports. I remember people speaking about the annual dance. I remember all this. But still, something else I would like to remember. And my holidays, I had fun. I really had fun. Quiet though I was, you know, aloof though I was, 
introverts though i was and never forget the waited for the april may months where to go to palagut beach there were buses arranged to go from here to kalangut beach not to not to place our feet in the in in the waters but we had another purpose and that is first we would people uh, saligaon group had they, we used to form a group there algona another group and maybe some other village another group first it would begin with games and even my curicos teacher curicos was a part of the games like dog and the bone and twos and threes and so forth and then it was followed by uh, a sing song se- uh, uh, session and in that sing song i remember the saldanas in that sing song session i remember the cruises of grand marot grand marot lizet edna philoben and one more no kita do not fernand fernand yeah i remember them they actually the cruises used to start the whole thing i don't know how many of you must be recalling all this Edna was our teacher Edna was our teacher in the baby class Alice was not there Miss Edna yeah now this was 65 to 68 this was a time that my mother was very harsh with me also means till 68 my mother was harsh i am a product of the rot though i only try I, 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 I why i mentioned this is because the day i left saligaon we left for porvari that is the day she left the stick behind in saligaon because really i am a product of the rot i i still cannot figure out why doctor all of us were in those times no she had a rule that you have, you have to stand either first or second in class if you stand that time okay get you stand first you get 10 rupees for the main exams where where you get the reports the even the monthly uh, tests you get the reports and all you see the actual rank stand first you get 10 rupees thanks uh, second you get 5 rupees anything less than that beating if you you will not believe that it is only because of that that all my life i stood first fearing that if i came down to second i might land a third but even then sometimes i used to get a beating because if she said i was very rebellious i don't know uh, miss shelly was i rebellious i don't know she said i hope i was rebellious she said i was rebellious i was stubborn she this uh, uh, this is what she said they don't know this i used to question her as to why why when i always stood first and and i i i knew what i was it means to the extent that i am quite person why so i i then i think i think your frustration used to uh, you know this was a way of getting rid of your frustrations who knows what is it because she was a very hard working woman we never had maids she did everything from head to toe my father worked he worked here at different offices but every outdoor work of my mother to the bank to the mamladar even discussing before the mamladar my mother did so so everything she did and so probably she 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 is an ag a bit my father was a little subdued somebody has to keep quiet so but i was someone in between i couldn't tolerate this also what my father was doing I couldn't tolerate what my mother was doing so i was some maybe i was a little rebellious a little stubborn refused to eat the food whatever it is for which i had um, beating with sticks with belts pinches and so forth but that was the way of life and we were and i'm very very proud actually that i'm a product of the rod discipline is wanted but cruelty is not wanted 
discipline and I am not advocating uh, the rod. I am not advocating it is, it is punishable under the law today. I am not advocating it, but discipline is wanted. And, and uh, it is discipline only whether in school or the sister Veronica, whether under my mother in Salmona and in Arari, it is discipline and the kind of education that was promoted in the school and was demanded by my mother at home and in the locality that made me what I was. So thank you, Sarigao, for these three glorious years in my life. Glorious because I came from, in a very, it was that glorious because it was a phase after a, after a culture shock. Thank you very much. Thanks. I didn't speak much about history. Thanks so much. No, that, that all is history. Yeah, history is what we make of it. But, so, uh, see, Father Nasi Mayant has written the land of the Sal tree. Saligaon is probably the only village which has seven or eight books on it, including on 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 the village, seven to eight books on the village, including including Father Father John's two books in Konkani and English, uh, then uh, uh, our uh, Clarice's book, recent book, uh, the old book that is now digitized, Giselle's granddad's book called Floriata Saligaon. But and still, like, Saligama picturesque village. So there's a but, lot. There's a lot. But still, but like, but but all these all these memories do 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 add and tell us pieces of the story which we don't know. Like for example, say the the women's perspective on the village. Okay, I think there's need for more women's voices. Not necessarily as victim, but but as Dr. Selsa says, no, her mother ha played a big larger than life role, and we know many women in our lives who who have been uh, quite larger than life in that sense. And you know, we need to look at it from different perspectives. The role of the school. The role of people in the village. One point that uh, struck me was uh, was one point that struck me was also the 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 what should I say the tough relationship between the returning expat and the local goan, which for those of us who came from elsewhere or, or moved into the village from another village, there is that creative tension where you are not accepted quite fully, you know, because you are seen as the unusual, as the odd person out. And uh, that's for you. And, and the villager also gets a culture shock from you because you're behaving so strangely. You're not behaving in keeping with uh, how, 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 how a girl should behave, how a boy should behave, and whatever it is. Any questions? Any questions and reactions? No, no, not from Pokhari. We lived here in Zaligao. No. no, afterwards we shifted to Pokhari. We shifted to Porvari because we had property in Porvari. But my mother used to walk from Saligaon to Porvari to once a, one, once a month. Yeah. Never came, no, no, no. I never came to uh, Saligaon. Yeah. April 68. Lutz Convent. I was staying in Saligaon. Saligaon. After 68 was Porvari. You might have not known at that time. There was a, there was a system that, see, uh, we, are not from, we were not from Saligaon and neither we were we rich. I, uh, you might be aware that India, Pakistan, uh, we, are, we are enemy countries. So you are not allowed to bring your savings at all. So we return back as paupers. We return back as paupers. So, and even I did my, uh, uh, all my studies, um, uh, at that time we used to pay fees, I'm sure. Seven we rupees, to, seven rupees or five rupees. We used to pay fees, but in college I could not afford. In fact, I was going to be converted into a clerk until I got an economically backward class scholarship. EBC. Yeah, EBC scholarship. So the issue was that we, at that time, they, it seemed the houses were not given, some houses were empty, they were not given out on rent. But what was the system? You, you can look, you can live in my house, but you have to look after my house and return it perfectly. You do the, uh, the painting, whitewashing once a year and keep it in perfect condition. 
and return it when I want. Yeah. That's all. Both the houses like that. And so also in Purvari when we went. All three houses. It's only when we, 40 years back, we uh, uh, came to uh, Pandim. Last 40 years I'm in Pandim. Only from then onwards we, we, are, we are paying rent. I'm still, I'm still, I didn't, or I own a flat in apartment in Purvari, but I am still, uh, you know, uh, as a tenant in, in, in uh, you know, in Panjim. See, when you get attached to a place, you, even if you own that place, it's insigni insignificant. What you are attached to, you may, may not be yours, but, and you are paying rent, but that becomes very significant. For me, at the moment, the area in which I live, on the Indians, the neighbors and all, yeah, 40 years of my life there. That's how it is. That's how you get attached to it. Your three years even was enough for, for a few families to be attached to a few families. And then there was a school where you had uh, Italian and Blandina and Bella coming from Arpara and, uh, and many others were there. And Angela Doyle, your uh, first cousin Angela Doyle, she is in touch with me. Yeah, we, are, we have a WhatsApp uh, group of class of 68, that is the batch. Thank you. Yeah. We spoke in length about education because you are in education. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there are uh, teachers whose ego and pride gets disturbed when a student expresses herself, himself, when they are a little, uh, you know, assertive, mm. when they have a difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. Or even today through Google they get the latest and they correct the teacher. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what would you do? I'm running a school in Bombay. What would advice you See the you times, the, those were the times when it was one-sided. Right. Today is not the times. But you must also know to draw the line. The students should also know to draw the line. The teachers should also know to draw the line. Interactive sessions are always good. But if you're going to, a teacher will be able to uh, uh, decipher whether you are actually testing the person or not. That's not fair for a student. You know, you know. Of course, the teacher is wrong. Suppose you are saying the teacher is wrong. I have had students who, who, who tried to behave in that way. Teacher is wrong, wrong. Except that it is wrong. Your teacher doesn't know. Say, yes, I do not know. Tomorrow I will tell you. I'm not, a teacher is not expected to be a walking encyclopedia. No, no, they run down the student. The student's uh, self-esteem gets disturbed. No, no, they, that, no, no, that can influence their life. It can, you see, it can be a two-way thing, yeah. I can tell you. Students can also disturb the self-esteem of the teacher. And a teacher can also disturb the self-esteem of a student. So both you know, should know where to draw the line. The student is young. Father, you father, know, no, but, no, but, some, but it's, it's, a, not it's a very today, thin not dividing today. line because See what Dr. Selsa was saying in our time, we right. all of us grew up with strict parents. I, I can write a full book on the strictness in our Jesuit schools and, and I don't uh, criticize them for that. I understand the, the reason why they did it and the motives why they did it and above all, only the right persons got caught like, you know, goody goody guys like me never got caught so I have nothing to complain. But, but you know, it's a thin dividing line. Sometimes the students were so See, naughty suppose, sometimes. Suppose a teacher has explained a particular topic and then at the stage in between, the student should not disturb the teacher unless the teacher asks questions. And if the student knows a little more than the teacher, teacher, can I say something about it? There's a way also. Right. Yeah? Yeah, so the, and the teacher should uh, allow the student to say it. Yes, yes, I did.